you are with your show gonna react to um how the greatest boxer made a global rap song legendary boxer described his childhood every day was the same school homework farm work training Who else hates homework? Because I hate homework, bro. I don't like doing homeworks, bro. Da -da -da. Getting hurt or dying might have been better than the life I was living. So I turned into a daredevil. I'd do anything. Didn't make much difference. I used to think about terminating myself anyway. Turned the little Roy Jones Jr. into one of the greatest boxers of all time. And even someone with a successful hit rap song. Someone who could state, I think I'm the best athlete rapper of all time. Roy Superman Jones Jr. broke a record that had stood for a century in 2003 when he became the WBA heavyweight champion. This achievement made him the first former middleweight champion to win a heavyweight title in 106 years. Roy Jones is one of the boxing experts' top choices for greatest boxer of all time as well. As he was growing up in Pensacola, Roy Jones Jr. followed in the footsteps of his father and grandfather. He became interested in boxing at an early age. His father, Roy Jones Sr., was in the military during the Vietnam War and was honored with the Bronze Star for his bravery. From the age of five, his father subjected the future Captain Hook to an extremely strenuous and rigorous training routine. His father would frequently engage in verbal and physical words and hits towards his son. There are many more statements that are found in these tough training sessions. Jones Sr. would make fun of his son, driving him to the edge, and then throw Jones Jr. in the ring with boys who were much older and larger than he was so that he could learn how to fight. Jones Sr. may have felt like he was making his son tougher, but he was making him think of very bad thoughts. I was in pain all day, every day. I was so scared of my father, Jones Jr. said. He'd pull up in his truck and start looking for something I'd done wrong. There was no escape, no excuse, no way out of nothing. Despite this cruelty, Jones Jr. showed his boxing sense and raw talent. He started showing outstanding abilities in the ring as a teenager, and his music in later life also seemed to be influenced by what his father put him through as a child. In 1984, he won gold in the 119-pound division at the U.S. National Junior Olympics. Two years later, he won the first of his two National Golden Gloves awards with a win at 139 pounds, repeating the feat in the 156 pounds category in 1987. At the 88 Summer Olympics in Seoul, South Korea. Do y'all, do y'all, let me ask y'all this. Do y'all prefer, like, head guards when y'all boxing or not? Do y'all, do, do y'all prefer head guards when, when y'all box or without the, without that, without the head guards? Let me know down in the comment section which y'all prefer. Yeah, he boxed for the U.S. And Roy Jones Jr. was the team's youngest light middleweight boxer and he became a pro with a 121-13 amateur record. Using his popularity to his advantage as a successful professional boxer, he published his debut studio album in 2002, named Round One, The Album. He released his tracks And Still, which would become a bit of a hit, and Y'all Must Have Forgot, which were met with a variety of re- Damn, a boxer had a, a hit, having hit songs, bro. That's crazy, cause usually like, like, like when like, like let's say like you know a wrestler like or or a boxer or somebody or a youtuber or fucking whatever whatever like saying like um having like oh, it's rapping now or oh, basketball player bro like was rapping like usually that shit don't do good bro usually but um I'm recording but like. You know, like, according to Ward Jones, that shit did, did good, bro. Yeah, it was a hit. Actions from listeners. The album reached its highest position on the top Heat Seekers chart at number 12, while on the top R&B and hip hop albums charts, it was ranked number 38, which isn't the highest. In the United States, the song that was then reached its highest position on the hot rap singles charts at number two while it reached its highest position on the hot R&B and hip hop singles charts at number 57. Jones Jr. was the producer of the album executively, and it featured vocals from a variety of artists like Mystical, Scarface, Dave Hollister, and others. The record did not do as well as everyone anticipated it would when it first released. Rather, individual tracks did well over time. There are around 10 million views today on Y'all Must Have Forgot on YouTube, 
while 750,000 people have listened to it on Spotify. But keep in mind, Spotify was not a thing back then. This is 2002 we're talking. Jones started the rap group Body Head Bangers in the early 2000s, despite the fact that he was still competing as a boxer at the time. Jones, Magic, Choppa, Snappa, and Bone Crusher were the original members of the group. Jones, SM Bullet, and Miss Candy are currently featured on the team's roster. They came out with an album that was titled Body Head Bangers Volume 1. It was initially released under the label of Body Head Entertainment, but it was re-released on October 26, 2004 by Universal Music with a different album cover, a reordered track list, and two new songs titled Can't Let Go and Getting Money Right. However, the song Down Here was not included in this version of the album. Go Hard or Go Home from the album is also one of the more popular songs from the group. Got about 37 million views on YouTube. Damn, bro. That shit did, that shit did good, bro. It went, no views went up, bro. Hip hop and dirty south performers such as VG. Low Flip, P. Pablo, Mike Jones, and Bun B were among. Who remember P. Pablo? I don't like it, bro. I don't. Y'all remember that song, bro? That song's fire, bro. I ain't gonna lie. The artists who contributed to the project. I Smoke, I Drank was one of the singles, but the biggest ever was Can't Be Touched that were released from this album. Can't Be Touched is widely regarded as. One of the most successful songs, if not the most successful song to have ever been produced by an athlete and is responsible for sending waves across the world. Although it doesn't have an official upload on YouTube, it has close to 500 million views across a variety of channels. Approximately 250 million people have listened to the song through just Spotify alone. The undisputed movie series would contribute to the song's popularity, although not entirely, but it has been used in the soundtrack. The group issued their first material though in almost a decade with the release of Body Head Bangers the EP on August 21st, 2015. The EP was released under Roy Jones Jr.'s new label Body Head Bangers Music and included the non-charting single Can't Lose. There are about 120,000 views of the song on YouTube and most of these songs didn't really do much, maybe 10, 20,000 streams overall since then. But during the time when Roy Jones Jr. recorded his first album, Round One, he was the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. The album reached the top 40 on the official charts. However, the legendary fighter hadn't released an album since then. Who Wanna Get Knocked Out, You Don't Wanna Go There, and Y'all Must Have Forgot were some of the album's standout tracks. Roy Jones Jr. bragged about his boxing abilities and rapped that he could easily knock out any of his opponents with his aggressive and in-your-face fighting style. Jones stated that he was in the process of producing a brutally honest rap song about having his head bashed in following his defeat against Antonio Tarver for the title. You know, I just like to express myself through my music, man, said Jones, his left eye swollen shut after his title loss to Antonio Tarver. My first album was about all them MFs who I s got knocked out. Son got knocked the fuck out, feel me? Wrapped up in the ring. Now I'm rapping about how I got my head bashed in with one punch. I fell down like a sack of dirt, man. And that's gonna be the theme of my new album. He's out, bro. He's out. He was out of there. There. He was out. Where am I? He was supposed to release a song lying on the mat from his new album. The song was written and performed in his unique fashion and contains plenty of memorable lyrics. But Jones shared a few lines from the song. I be dancing around the ring like a bee getting ready to sting. Then I feel a fist in my face like I've been sprayed with some mace. My body be swaying this way and that. Clear the way, MF, cause I'm lying on the mat. That song is just my way of expressing what I was feeling when I got my skull crushed by Tarver. And if you think that's severe, wait till you hear the second single, I've Been Exposed. All my life I've been fighting stiffs and mags. Then I fight a real man and get brained real bad. Then the blood start rushing out my mouth and nose. My career be over. MF, I've been exposed. Jones searched for a new record label to distribute a second album, but they decided not to take part in recording of the new album. Roy Jones Jr. was certain that he would have been signed to a label in the near future at that time. The album's too good to keep to myself. When it's done, I'll find someone to release it. Columbia, Sony, Elektra, Edel. They'd all be lucky to put their names on my record. They're just being shy because I lost the title. But that's okay. I'm not just a fighter. I can rap, too. 
That's why my first album went platinum. Well, not platinum exactly, but my mom did buy a copy. Eagle American Records expressed no interest in realizing his album, and rather their president Jonathan Frist said, look, his first album was a piece of trash, but at least he was the champ and had a little clout in the industry. He even went on to diss Roy Jones in his album. It was- Damn, bro. You really did not mess with, with his album, bro, his first album. Dirt cheap to make. Sold a few copies, and we just broke about even on it. However, we're not really in the business of promoting rap albums from boxers who aren't even champions anymore. How are we gonna promote it? Here's the new album from the guy who just got beat up by Antonio Tarver. Please. Damn, he violated. <laughs> he must not like Roy Jones, bro. I'll give Roy a little credit, though. He's the only guy that could write a rap song bragging about getting knocked out. Quite harsh words. Another athlete rapper that's somewhat compared to Roy Jones Jr. and who had been the most successful is Damian Lillard, aka Dame Dalla. He's good, but he ain't sold the records that I sold yet. Dame is good. Dame is really good. But he ain't match up. So it's one thing to be good, it's another thing to make the songs that people want to hear and want to hear again. Jones Jr. made the bold claim to Shannon Sharp, who shared those comments on his Instagram. Many of Roy Jones Jr.'s admirers were still waiting for the release of his second album. After all, he has had one of the biggest hits ever. Plenty of people that have heard this song weren't even familiar with him being a boxer at all. Some people all over the world probably just thought this was another song that was played at sporting events. It's pretty much at this point a classic track. Whether or not you respect his rapping ability is something else. The second album was never released, and Jones Jr. claimed that his difficult background was the reason he didn't mind getting harmed throughout his time spent competing professionally. It's clearly obvious that his songs glorify that powerful mentality of in-your-face ferocity. The personality he had in the ring was captured pretty accurately in his songs, with people giving him respect that this guy, everything that he rapped about was true. And the violent treatment he had as a child at the hands of his father helped shape him into the adult that he would become. Except for the fact that he didn't smoke or drink, his music was frequently a testament to the portrayal of his life. Jones discussed his father in the Tyson vs. Jones docuseries. He was cool throughout but became upset at the end. Everything was what, how, when, and where he said. So, no say. I do best when I can speak my mind. Adding, time came. To speak up. I left my father. I succeeded. In 1994, the Los Angeles Times contacted Jones about his father's absence. His corner was empty since 1992. I don't have time to go through that, he said. Again. What occurred? Split. Roy Jones Jr. went to retirement with a record of 66 wins and 9 losses. Two years later, he announced a massive exhibition fight against none other than Mike Tyson. The pandemic prevented fans from entering, yet over 1.3 million pay-per-views were sold. Young fans saw two of the greatest fighters ever fight years after they had- Mind you, they out of their prom. They way out of their prom, bro. And they fighting. Retired. Jones was still clearly dedicated to his fitness, and had shown off his impressive fitness in social media posts as well as in the ring. Outside of the realm of sports, he's led a highly active career. He got a start in acting by playing himself in the film The Devil's Advocate, which was released in 1997. But since then, he's had appearances in boxing movies such as Southpaw and Creed II, as well as the Matrix series. But it's one thing to succeed in the sports realm, and it's another thing to succeed just once, even though people may say he didn't have a long career in rap history. But having one massive hit song that's over platinum, that people respect just as a musical kind of hype up song is one of the craziest stories we've ever seen.